bring your attention to the breath, and resist any temptation to leave the breath and go look at something else, because that's the mind's normal tendency. It's like a little kid who runs into the house, picks up a sandwich, goes running out. You come into the present moment and then leave the present moment to the point where it becomes habitual that as long as you're here, you're looking for some place else to go. But if you keep running around like that, the mind has no protection. So make this the home for your mind and learn how to settle into your home. This, of course, is where you run into the opposite problem. Is when you do settle down here in the course of a normal day, if you haven't been meditating, the reason you settle down right here is because you're planning to go to sleep. Sometimes when things get very quiet inside, the breath gets very still. You just drift off. So you stay here, but it's, it's a home where you work. You rest here, too, but you also have your office here in the house to do your work. Because there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of greed, aversion, and delusion running around in the mind. I received a message the other day from someone who said, why is it that meditation is considered to be meritorious? There are other activities you can be doing where you develop mindfulness, alertness, and ardency, as with any skill. Why is meditation supposed to be such a high meritorious skill? It's because you use those mental skills for a higher purpose. You're not just making a chair or sewing a pair of pants. You're realizing that your mind has a lot of greed, aversion, and delusion. And if you don't take care of them, you're not going to be the only one who suffers. People around you will suffer from your greed, from your aversion, from your delusion. And the problem with delusion is that it tends to propagate more delusion, keeps spreading and spreading. So when you're meditating, you're taking responsibility for your mind. And what's going to come out of your mind, you want to make sure that it's good. You can guarantee its quality. Like a factory. Your house is not just an office, but it's got a factory because you're creating things that you're sending out. And you want to send out good things all the time. You don't want to send out things that are going to be harmful to others or harmful to yourself. So here you're taking responsibility. You're not just saying, well, I had an urge to do something and blame it on the urge. You chose to follow the urge. Now, it may be difficult to withstand it because some of those urges are old habits. And old habits like to dress themselves up as nature. That was another question I got recently. That when you meditate, aren't you going against nature? When you're trying to get rid of your attachments, aren't you going against nature? We are going against your old habits, which like to dress themselves up as more than just old, unskillful habits. But we have this ability within the mind, this ability for the mind to observe itself. And you can see that you follow certain thoughts, certain ideas, certain urges, and there's going to be trouble. And you don't have to follow them. So when you don't have to follow them, why bother? When you can think in these ways, then what seems like a natural tendency is a lot less impressive, a lot less daunting. You're not fighting against nature, you're just fighting against old habits. And you can replace them with new ones. As the Buddha said, if we couldn't replace our old habits with new ones, he wouldn't bother to teach. But he saw that we can. So we can take responsibility for our actions and not blame them on nature or blame them on other things aside from our own choices. And so when we meditate, we're choosing to go against greed, aversion, and delusion. And that's why this is so meritorious. Because you look around you, there are very few people in the world who really take responsibility for the way they look for happiness. But there are the shining lights in the human race, the shining lights among the devas. So you can make yourself into a shining light, too. You benefit, and the people around you will benefit as well.